the ad show. Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So today we are going to do the hashtag ask ads. So if you have any questions for the next video, I don't know exactly when I'm going to be recording it, but you can put them down below with the hashtag ask ads. I'll put something on the screen now. So I only got one question last time. So if we can get, if we can get two questions below this video, that'll be awesome. However, I did put something out on Instagram and I got a question back there. And also I realized that over the last few weeks, I've actually had a few questions on my comments. And while most of the comments have been responded to, there's a couple on there that I didn't respond to. In fact, there's a couple on there that I didn't even realize I'd had. So I don't know whether YouTube notifications, you know, that whole, whole thing about YouTube notifications being pretty terrible, which they are. Um, but yeah, so I've got a few of them on there and I thought I'd answer those in that, this video as well, since it's kind of just a general Q&A video. So with that being said, all that being stated, um, I will get on and I will do the first question. We'll do the uh, one from Instagram first. So Robbo, Matty Robbo asks, would, would be great to hear what you've learned about yourself during lockdown. Um, right, this is, this is a hard one actually. I've not really thought about these questions pre obviously doing them on this video, so kind of uh, thinking on my feet here, having to really think right now. Um, but I think that actually what's coming to mind is that I'm a little bit more extroverted than I first thought. Because although for the first few weeks I was fairly, fairly comfortable with things and um, although the situation obviously loomed over us all and there was a presence of anxiety there, I was fairly okay just getting on in the house, doing what I'm doing, doing a bit of writing, I was working on a poetry book, doing obviously the business, eBay was doing well and stuff in terms of uh, obviously parcels going out and stuff dealing with university stuff, all that sort of stuff, so I was just, you know, quite happy just getting on but after a few weeks, I really started to feel a little bit off kilter with my psychological health and I thought to myself, you know what, I actually do need people and um, I am actually, really, I could be classed as an ambivert rather than a, than a complete introvert because when I do the tests online, I always get sort of a mixture of introversion and extroversion but actually my psychological uh, well, my personality type, not psychological type, but my personality type is INFJ, so it's, I'm an introvert, um, but it's kind of a little bit more broad than that, and I think that there is an extroverted side to me. I mean, I do believe, as, as Andrew said very correctly before, that we can all adopt introverted or extroverted kind of... Um, uh, I don't know, demeanours, I suppose, in the situations that we're in. And it's very true, you know, we all have that capability. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I think that that's something, that's something that has kind of, I've been thinking of. I thought, actually, you know, I do need people. I need to be around people. I need to socialise more than I actually think I do. Um, and certainly for my for my psychological health, for, for my, you know, keeping things balanced, um, but it, it was just interesting to, to understand that that is more prevalent than I first thought, than I was maybe first aware of, and that kind of um, has been shown during this situation. Uh, the other thing is, I don't know really, I mean, probably the fact that actually being around the same people for too long uh, annoys me quite a lot. So, although I've just said, you know, I need to be social and stuff, when you're around the same people, it can get a little bit sort of claustrophobic, maybe, a little bit tension-wise and stuff. Um, and I think I think that's possibly something I've learned as well. But I don't want to go into it any more than that, because I could spend 10, 20 minutes on each question if I do. Um, but yeah, I think they're kind of uh, a couple of the things, really. So let me just scroll up here. I don't know where these questions are actually. Have I? I've got. Oh yeah, I have got them on here. So uh, good to see. Uh, so Lucy says, good to see the storage space and the shed. What happened to the storage unit? So the storage unit is now gone. Obviously, I am going off to university. Um, I handed my keys in this. No, last week. A week today actually. Um, so that's all sorted, done, and dusted. And I am no longer on the contract there. I know I'm no longer um, within that storage unit. So um, I actually went and, I, as I say, I handed the keys over, and I thought I would feel a bit kind of melancholy or sad about it. I suppose. 
But I didn't really, I just, you know, hand the keys, well I didn't actually hand the keys over, I had to put them in the letterbox because they weren't in there, they, they weren't in operation at that time, I don't know. Well they are kind of in operation but they're not actually at the, at the place, they're working from home. Um, so yeah, I kind of just handed that in in the letterbox and, and I didn't really feel that much. So yeah, the, um, the lockup is gone now, I did have it, I'd still, I'd had it for about two years, I think it was January uh, 2018 I got it. it, I mean it's on this channel, you can go on, on this channel and search the channel and search for a video called, um, is it just my new lockup or something like that, maybe just search lockup and you'll, you'll probably find it um, if you want to see it because I've documented pretty much my entire journey on this channel so anything really I reference in uh, questions or videos normally it is actually in videos in the past as well uh, which, is, which is really really good to have such a back catalogue there and to, to see the journey and stuff. Um, it was a shame actually because I didn't, I didn't actually, do I mean I suppose I am now in talking about it but I didn't actually physically document the process of moving out but obviously things are going on at the moment and and so so much is happening with me so yeah I, I don't think I was going to vlog moving out of there or anything um, currently at this time um, but yeah I am moved out of there I was obviously there for two years two and a half years but it was a good space uh, nice little space uh, and I'm glad I'm glad I had it but the thing is I just wasn't very organized with it I mean it was always chaotic in the lockup. It was always everything was just thrown in there. Um, and I would say to anyone getting a lockup, I'd be very, very careful because you know you, you just kind of you. If you're like me, you'll just end up. It'll just get cluttered. Unless you're a very, very organised person, I would say be careful getting a lockup because it's just a dumping ground basically where your stock goes to. Well, just stock goes to just be stored and, and, and hardly ever put on eBay. That's what it was like for me. I'd just cherry pick the best items out there, put them on. Oh yeah, that'll do. Get another haul and then put the haul in the lockup, cherry pick the best bits out. And you can see what happens. The lockup just gets full of, of, of really crappy stuff that, yeah, okay, you can make a bit on eBay, but it it's not the best items or anything. So yeah, I'd be, I'd be careful if, if you're getting a lockup yourself. Um... We can see here, Jay asks, um, is Ads Emporium dead or is it on hold? So the Ads Emporium, not many people who are new to the channel will kind of know about this idea, but I had an idea, oh, I don't know, two years ago or so now, where essentially um, I would build up to getting an antique store or an antique shop or something like that, and it would be called the Ads Emporium, or failing that I would get maybe um, a large space at an antique center and then obviously that would be it but it was more kind of that was like a pre thing to the ads emporium so the ads emporium would have been a shop so actually my, I didn't tell this story so I will actually tell this story um, and then obviously you can get a bit more of a feel for it because I didn't divulge this information at the time because it was a project that was ongoing and I didn't really want to talk about it until it came to fruition but unfortunately it never did come to fruition so essentially what happened was my granddad was renting this massive building in Macclesfield off this farmer and this farmer said I'm going to give you basically rent free for X number of months because it was an absolute tip and my granddad is a, is a builder, he's been a builder by trade for God knows what, 60 years or something? I don't know, a long time. So he obviously was going to clear it all out, it, it was an absolute, it was terrible this building, it, was a, it wasn't just messy, it was just Oh, there was beams hanging out everywhere, there was rubble everywhere, you know, it was proper crazy. Um, so he was going to give it like rent free and then my granddad would do it up basically, to cut a long story short. And he would have in there a joiner's workshop that he would basically get people in uh, and he'd, he'd obviously teach people about how to uh, do joinery and things like that. Uh, I think they'd have some machinery and stuff in there and stuff. Um, what else was going to be in there? There was going to be a cafe in there. I mean, it was a bit. It was a big building. There was going to be a cafe in there, and then within there, at some some part of it, I would have an antique shop, which I would run in unison with my granddad, basically. And obviously, I'd get a decent deal on the rent because it's my granddad. So that's like really good, like a really good situation, basically. Um, and so I went down quite a few times to this building, and I'd see the progress, and um, and it. Was so it was exciting it was interesting all the rest of it 
But my granddad and his farmer, they'd had uh, a written agreement and stuff, obviously, or, uh, for legal reasons or whatever, I don't know. But we'd have, we'd have this written agreement. But there was tension between them, and uh, and it ended up that they had to just go their separate ways in the end, and my granddad had to just pull out of it. Um, I'm not going to be bit biased. I don't know whether it was... Uh, maybe my granddad being too assertive or a farmer being too assertive. I'm, I'm not sure on the full details of it to be honest. I just remember at the time, because this was quite a while ago, I just remember at the time that my granddad was saying from his point of view that the farmer was being unreasonable and stuff like that and then he's obviously handed the keys over at some point and, uh, and that was that basically and that was why uh, the ads emporium didn't work in that setting. Now of course Prior to that, I had already had this idea and had thought about doing it myself and stuff. So, getting to the actual question at hand, is that dead? Is that idea dead or will it be a future reality? Um, I don't really know. I honestly don't really know. I mean, obviously my life's taking a new direction now with regards to more of a more academic pursuits. But that doesn't mean to say that the antiques are gone. That doesn't mean to say uh, I won't ever, let's say, have a shop or something like that. But... I could see if I were to have a shop, it would be in a totally different way. I would staff it with a manager in there. I would, uh, you know, obviously I'd go down there fairly regularly, but I probably wouldn't actually be wholly within the business in terms of be really, really active within the business. But then it starts to be become an idea. Uh, you get the idea of, well, is there any point doing it? Because if it's a dream of yours, you, you don't you don't staff a dream of yours with a manager, do you? For example, if you want to be, um, I don't know, you want to be a plumber. What, what, well, what you don't do is you don't hire a plumber to do the work and then you just don't do any work. If, if it's your dream to be a plumber, you do the plumbing, you know? It's like, so, so if it's my dream to have an antique shop, that would be a kind of a bit of a pointless way of going about it. That would be a way of just simply doing it just to earn money. You know, and then I just collect the, the profit, basically, at the end of the month. But, you know, what's the point? Is there any point in that? And logically, it's like, well, not really, unless you just want more money. And there's other ways to get money, to be honest, that are probably far less stressful than actually employing several people at a shop like that. Um, but you never know. I, the thing is, I can't see myself doing it in terms of me being in the shop five days, seven days a week, because as I say, my life is going in a slightly different direction. And even with the reselling, um, for my life now, it's only ever going to be a part-time thing. It's only ever going to be uh, one or two days a week. I can't see it being uh, a seven-day-a-week thing anymore, the, the reselling, um, because what will happen is the philosophy and the writing and the things like that will become a, a five-day-a-week thing and the reselling become a two-day-a-week thing. There is the possibility that if I am self-employed as a uh, philosopher in terms of doing academic writing and doing books and things like that and maybe doing public speaking or whatever, that I could, have, because there's flexibility in that, I can run the reselling alongside it, and it's kind of like I'm 50-50. So, I mean, there's a possibility that I could be 50-50, but, um, yeah, so so I would kind of say it possibly is dead, but I would never say never, really. I'd never say it's completely gone. The idea is completely, completely dead. I would never, never really say that. So, Josh asks... How does it work if you're already employed and want to become a part-time reseller? How will they calculate my tax? Now, I don't really like asking, answering uh, tax questions, but what I will say is there is a section on the tax return that you have to include, and then obviously you have to include within that section your employed earnings and things like that, where you're employed, the employment address, all that sort of stuff, and then obviously that will go towards calculating your tax or HMRC calculating your tax. What I had to do in my first tax return because I had a part-time position is I had to put in the money I had earned from that part 
time position over that current tax year and I had to put in their address and their information like I just said um, but because I actually quit that part-time position the next year because I didn't have any other job but reselling I didn't have to do that I didn't have to include that section in the tax return so that's as far as I understand it that's how it was a few years ago obviously I've not had to include that section in the tax return for a few years now so it might be subtly different but it's probably going to be pretty much the same but I won't go into any more tax information information or anything like that um, because I'm not you know I'm not a certified accountant so uh, I can't really say tons about the tax obviously I did do accounting um, at college and then obviously part of the uni university degree that I did was obviously partly uh, there was a bit of accounting in that and stuff um, but since I didn't actually complete the university degree I can't really say uh, that I have a university level knowledge on accounting um, but you know I have studied it before and stuff but I don't want to get into that necessarily so yeah but that's just a general idea I suppose uh, next we've got Bill he says can you do a video on info regarding postage couriers and international shipping well I've kind of done videos in the past on certain bits certain elements of postage um, I've done bits on packing as well um, and you know just general sort of shipping and stuff like that I've done videos on uh, packaging materials that I use stuff like that I haven't done one on international shipping now, I don't do a, a ton of international shipping um, if I do giveaways on my YouTube and stuff I'll send things out internationally uh, for that I may send the odd thing out if someone asks me on eBay to send internationally, but more than likely uh, I either just say no I don't send internationally or they will just purchase through the GSP anyway. A lot of people just purchase through the GSP. Um, so I don't really know whether I should do a video on international postage because I'm not really incredibly clued up on it. Obviously you can go on Hermes and you can do Hermes International and you can go on like parcels to go and stuff and you can get international um, kind of quotes and stuff on there. You can go on Royal Mail and, and get your international prices on there. I know obviously with uh, you, most of the time you have to include, uh, what are they called? Um, sort of declarations, so you have to put declarations on the parcel for what's inside it and things like that. Uh, I think that's for if it's going outside of Europe. Um, so for example, if you send the US or Australia or somewhere like that. Um, but I don't really know that much about international shipping. Uh, the only other thing I know is um, it did used to be quite cheap on Hermes if it was under two kilograms. I don't know whether that's the same anymore um, because I think I went on there not long ago and I put something in it, it seemed to be quite expensive uh, when I was trying to ship something to, to the US so uh, yeah I don't know I mean it's best just to go through different sites, go on Hermes International, go on Parcels to Go, go on Royal Mail, look at the prices, look at all that sort of stuff, uh, get a feel for what you have to do if you have to include any doc documentation, customs documentation or anything on the parcel and uh, and you you know you you'll get a feel for it but i don't really do that much obviously i have a general knowledge there but um I don't really do that much, I don't really do that much actually practically with it, so I can't really say whether I'm doing whether I would be doing things incredibly the correct way or or not so yeah, um, that's probably one for someone else to be honest um i'm I'm trying to think who does a lot of international shipping. I know Nick does a lot of his own internet I think he does well he did at one time. Um, don't know whether George does or not. I think George might do actually. So there's a few other people anyway who do um, sort of international shipping. Right then, where am I now? Um, oh right, so we've only got one question left, so that's pretty good. Uh, so 18 minutes, that's not too bad. Uh, Ask ads in it to flip it. Susie asks. Are you more excited or more nervous about going back to school? I kind of had a giggle when I first saw that question because going back to school, it makes me sound like I'm going to primary school or something. But that might just be a difference between here and the US. Maybe in the US people call it school when you're referencing university. Well, I know we call it college, but maybe we call it, I don't know. But um, yeah, it just made me giggle because when, when we say school over here, we basically refer to primary school or maybe high school. Um, but yeah, so that made me giggle a bit. But anyway, yeah, so I'm more excited or more nervous. Uh, I've gone through, as you would expect, I've gone through kind of periods of both. Um, I've, I've just recently gone through a period of doubt in which whether I'd, I'm not certain whether the course, I, I know the course is what I want, but I'm not certain whether there'll be another course that I might want to do that uh, will, you know, will give me something 
different and will allow me to do something else that I really also want to do. Um, but at the end of the day, whichever course you take, um, you know, I'm going to be sacrificing the one for the other. And so it's really just a case of, of which one do you feel in your heart is, is the best response. And, uh, and so I, I feel 95% certain on this one course. But if I, if I can do this other course or I can do a similar course to this other course in the future at some point, you know, I mean, I, I don't like thinking too far into the future because I don't know. I could go outside today. I mean, I, obviously the course I'm doing is, is philosophy and philosophy really makes you look at life really scrupulously. And uh, so I always think to myself, well, I could go outside today and get knocked over by a bus. That's my philosophical um, kind of thinking. And so I think, well, I can't depend upon being, you know, being in my forties. I might not live to my to see my forties. Um, obviously, you hope you do, but you don't know, do you? So um, I can't really say that essentially. Um, you know, I'll live to see my 40s and therefore I can't really say that I'll get another opportunity to do that course in the future because I might not. But if I do and if I've got the money to support myself to go back to university in like say like my, my 40s or something, then I will do that and I will do this other course and I will then f fulfill um, having both. But unfortunately at the moment I can't have my cake and eat it. It's not, it's not like that and a lot of the time you can't. So I'm going more with what I feel and that's this other course, the course I was already enrolled on, already accepted for, which is philosophy and religion, which I have a lot of passion for. Um, but yeah, there is really like two or three things in my life that I feel I actually am and that I gravitate. So, you know, when people say, who are you? Um, and, and most people don't know an answer to that question. And I wouldn't say I know a whole answer to that question, but I certainly know I am, in terms of subjects, I am, let's say, two or three different subjects, but I know I am, I align to them, I just my whole being just radiates them, and I just can't be anything other. Um, if you will, you could say it's a cultural role or something like that, a, a calling, a, um, I don't know, just, yeah, something like that, really. But anyway, so, yeah, I've, I've had periods of being nervous and then being excited and then nervous and then excited. Um, but I think at the moment I'm probably more excited. I, I would say probably a bit more excited than nervous at the moment. Maybe a few months ago. Well, no, maybe a few months ago I was quite excited. But there was a period in between that I was a little bit nervous. I was oh, I don't know. I'm not... I wasn't really ever incredibly uncertain but obviously I was just thinking, mm, you know, I'm not sure how I'll get on with actually the basic idea of being at university and, and being able to do that and, uh, and yeah, just, just be in that environment, I suppose, and, and um, have met us. I mean, a lot of people would say it's not much responsibility, to be honest, but also there is elements of responsibility there and I will have to stand up and I will have to... Uh, cement myself uh, within that responsibility and also because I'm a little bit older than a lot of the people who are going to be in my flat most of them are going to be obviously 18, 19 um, I'm going to be I'm going to have to be the slightly older guy who who does know know a bit of what they're doing and know a, knows a little bit about what life is essentially and, and how to navigate it and so uh, I've got to step up in that respect to make sure that people in my flat are, are okay and stuff obviously um, not to be too much of a dictator or a father figure or anything who says who lays down the law but but at least to say uh to, to at least you know help people when they need to be helped and all the rest of it and just organize essentially it's like a, a family unit and to help organize the family unit but not necessarily um to be a father let's say but um yeah so there will be responsibility there um and and i'm just i'm, I'm conscious of that and I'm trying to map out a way of, uh, you know, how I want the unit to work and how I want people uh, to be able to 
be comfortable in that environment, to be comfortable in the flat, to uh, be able to talk to us all if they need to talk to us all, all that sort of stuff. I'm conscious of that and I want to create that environment essentially for people. Um, I don't know why I take it upon, well I do know why I take it upon myself, I probably have a god complex or something, that's from watching too much Doctor Who. Um, but yeah, so uh, that's that anyway, so I'll leave it there guys, thank you very much for watching, uh, I've got a red thing on my... Uh, camera now, I better go, oh god, does that mean it's going to shut off? Well, okay, uh, it's going to shut off anyway.